right, let's uh, get more of your tweets now on this particular subject being the 2013 matric results and all things education, actually, because uh, the Minister there of Basic Education has been unpacking uh, all sorts of issues and all sorts of challenges, but also mm -hmm. highlighting the, the progress that has been made. But uh, one issue that has been touched on extensively is that of the Eastern Cape and the infrastructure development there and the various uh, skills and resource shortages in that particular province. And that's exactly what Manyanani Mawisa uh, alluded to in his tweet saying, I challenge the minister to come to the rural Eastern Cape and tell me uh, that the government is doing a good job. And I can assure you the minister has said live here on Morning Live that uh, her, uh, she alongside uh, the, the president will be going to the Eastern Cape this week, if not next week, and uh, addressing the challenges there. She has said that they are well aware of the challenges there and that the problem is the implementation at grassroots level. And uh, Anil Mda, uh, she's with Prasa now, also commenting on that, saying the minister doesn't need to come to Eastern Cape for you or anyone to see how much strides or how many strides government has made in that particular province. And uh, Anil Mda responding to Manya Nani uh, via Twitter. Uh, Vumani saying that the NSCN3 and FET colleges is no more. So what is the next step for students that obtained NICN2 before it was stopped? And Vumani having a concern there, perhaps a question that will be addressed or if not already addressed by the minister, the issue of FET colleges and the various qualifications thereof. Debo Ho saying, um, congratulations, Minister Motecha. Concur, education is a lifetime process. You are the right person for the job. And Debo, well pleased with uh, the minister's comments there. Uh, Faith also weighed in on this particular debate, saying how can we focus on, quote, fixing matrix when the problem begins at the bottom? And that's definitely something to look at as well. Grade one, two and three level, uh, the ANA results or ANA results there, uh, painting a picture that needs to be addressed. As, so we do need to start at the bottom and not just focus on the uh, the upper echelons of uh, the studies on the 12th year. So Faith, that's a, a very important question that you raise. Let's get another one from Tepo saying we can blame the minister for the 30% pass rate, but the fact remains parents don't play an active role as they should. And Tepo highlighting the fact that this is a multifaceted approach. It takes a whole village to raise a child. It's not just the minister's responsibility, you and I, uh, as well as the parents, the teachers, the learners themselves also have a role to play. Well, with that being said, we got uh, a little picture of what you had to say about the conversation today. But let's go back to uh, Peter now, who's standing by. Peter, it's over to you. Right. OK, I know that uh, you've been uh, probably, if you're at home watching, that uh, quite a number of questions have come through via Twitter. Unfortunately, our audience here couldn't get them. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get a summary of those questions and we'll put those through uh, to Minister uh, as quickly as we can. But in the meantime, let's go to table number four. Joan PC uh, is standing by with a question. Joe. Thank you, Peter. And congratulations, Amen. Uh, and the team. Uh, mine is uh, just a simple question. Uh, the issue of IAB, uh, there's a whole abaloo mostly by analysts to want to compare the basic education system together with that one. And secondly, the issue of the analyst, hey, these professors, I don't know, we thought well learned people will analyze better. Um, they are continuously criticizing. Are you willing to give them a space to engage or have a, some kind of a small Anyana summit uh, <laughs> so, that, so that all of us who are involved in an education system, including those critics from those professors, including the one in UNISA, you know, uh, Professor Tifo, uh, I think we need to engage with them. Will you create that space? for us to do that so that we are able to analyze and perhaps get a better way forward because they studied in the Bantu education but they criticize a better future for our own children. Thank you very much. Okay. Are you having these conversations already, aren't you? No, we do. And there's something very strange and unfortunate about that because on an ongoing basis, Peter, we open forums for conversations. For instance, when we launched the national collaboration, it was to enable, in a very structured environment, 
your educationists, your experts and teachers to have a forum through which we can engage and it's been doing, working quite well. Uh, for instance, some of the 30% analysts, Umaluse had convened a conference of assessors to say, let's talk about it. And I can tell, I was told that Johnson never even presented himself. So all he's waiting for, we announce the results, he's going to jump on the 30% and repeat it year after year. Even if there's a forum to say, let's come make a presentation. I've set up a commission to look at the administration of NEC results. What do you expect your professors and your analysts, let them write what their views are. Make a submission and not run to the media. But I'm sure there's much more to it uh, than you can say because, I mean, really, without saying, I really don't want to sound negative against people who comment because it's, it's their right and it's fair. And I think it's quite useful to also to bring forward a different view so that people are not fed with just one side that comes from government. So to present an alternative view for people to try and analyze. But some of your commentators are just really, sometimes I call them guest workers, and they comment about everything under the sun. And there's no chance they can know everything. You talk politics, they know what is happening. You talk NC, they know what is happening. You talk health, they know. You talk education. And you really accept that these are general South Africans. They may hold titles, but they're just some of the guest workers. And they've made guest work as part of their profession. And you accept it and say it's part of democracy, it's part of being free. And we should really appreciate that South Africans are free. And, and this is part of freedom. They are free, 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 and it's part of being free. <laughs> table number four, Tozama Mantashi. Uh, table number four, Tozama. Honorable Minister, we really put our hands together for you and your team, from your national down to the districts, when you look at the current results, uh, looking where we come from. Uh, I, I hear what Comrade Mpisa is saying, but I, I want to say it is a moving vehicle that is being backed at by all the dogs. Uh, keep it up. Uh, we appreciate that this is a woman minister. But I just have one question, minister. Uh, I, from a lay person's uh, standpoint, what is the difference between this maths literacy and mathematics, which we need for our children to become the engineers that the country is short of? Can we give our kids maths, not maths literacy? Is it possible? Thank you, Minister. Now, this is a very helpful question, Dora, because what we also ignore that in the past, we had maths, which is still there, for those who want to do engineering and all courses that require maths, and we have maths lead to give any other learner who is not intending to do your engineering, your actual sciences, an opportunity to really acquire basic numeracy skills. People like myself who would have wanted to be your ECD teacher, you may not have needed maths, I just needed social skills to deal with it. Some, if you want to be a sports journalist, you may not be needing maths. You just need perhaps other skills. So maths lead was meant for those groupings that don't need maths as their career, but to give them a skill, a numeracy skill, just to enable them to be numerate in your basic uh, uh, numeracy. So maths lead and maths are different. So kids who want to do engineering do uh, 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 take up maths. And that's why all the time we count our math statistics. But there are also those that don't intend to use maths in their career. They are given the basic skill in numeracy through maths lead. The recent concern that has come through is that some of the kids, and I think it's information that we are trying to improve in schools, that some of the kids who want to do, and we have the potential to pass in maths, or want to do careers that require maths, go and take maths lead, and at the end of the day and say, I want to go into engineering. And when they say, no, you have to do pure maths, it means they were, mis they were misinformed in terms of what maths lead is and what pure maths is. So, and we're trying to, to, to clear that, uh, but maths lead was really meant for learners in the past that would do your general stream, your business stream, and other kids who really are not intending to do maths-related careers. Is there an argument, though, that we, to get our nation 
to compete and to move forward to try and push everybody to do maths and science at some level? I'm not sure what the value is. I mean, if I'm going to do, honestly, because it do mean that other uh, uh, courses don't have value. Mm. If I really want to go and do history and be a historian and be a researcher, perhaps mm. I don't need that. But I could do statistics maybe, but why do I need to? Mm. Because there are, if I want to, for instance, go into hospitality, mm. why not do courses then take me in that direction mm. that I want to go to and take courses which don't take me to where I want to because you'll want those kids mm. to really have foundation skills which enable them to pursue the careers they want. Are we producing enough maths and science students? Maybe it's a question. No, I really that's a question, exactly. You. And that's a question that we are saying our schools are really not, or our system is not producing enough maths kids. And when we did our annual assessments uh, last year, we kept on picking up that there is a death trap in your senior phase, which discourages even kids with the potential to do meds, or kids who want to pursue careers in meds from pursuing meds. I mean, the last an assessment gave us almost 14% in grade nine, and that's when kids are beginning in grade 10 to choose careers. And if at 14% in the senior, we perform at that level, and that's where the death trap is in terms of kids who want to do meds. So the, Short and long is we're not producing enough uh, uh, meds and we're not preparing our kids adequately even for, 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 for meds and science. How and that's why we're that? focusing and we're focusing on the senior phase to say this is where the death trap is for our kids. And as I said, for this year, we'll be assessing the entire senior phase, seven, eight, nine, try and ramp up that phase because that's where we're, we, we, we picked up that we have problems which create the situation where we are not producing enough uh, Maths and science learners, but also not preparing them adequately also for the, for, for the metric uh, uh, maths. Maureen Mangabane, table number one. Table number one. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I'm back again, and I also want to congratulate you to climb the ladder even though there is some, criti some people who are criticizing you, but don't worry, push, push it, go forward. Uh, I just want to say, Minister, it's just a comment that you've done very well with your team, but I will also ask the department to encourage the children to do agriculture in, at primary level, just to start with, when I was at school, I was doing school garden. I still know how to do a compost, how to do silage, because we need a farm who are educated in our country. And agriculture is the main thing to take up our economy in this country. The other thing I just want to say, Minister, on when you go to the manifesto with your organization, Please put that on the table that in rural areas we still suffer uh, in our schools with poverty. Let the school nutrition be the, the, the president, whoever, will the their provinces by let it be done by rural women because they are the people who knows what to eat and what to put on the table for the children. The other thing is the transport. Well, we've run out of time, but if you could be very quick. The transport, uh, our matrix uh, children, they travel long ways to, yeah. to the schools. And also the sanitary towers, please put that on the manifesto. Thank you. It's got quite a shopping list for your uh, manifesto, <laughs> but all very important issues. No, they are actually. Yeah. The manifesto is, is, is being launched on Saturday, so it's almost uh, completed, but you, she can really be assured that we've made our submissions as the education sector mm -hmm. and have made points around strengthening of the social package. And I'm not, so in terms of agriculture, it's one of the, in all other subjects, it's one of the decisions we took when we revised the curriculum to limit in the lower phase what our kids learn. Because what we also discovered that the South Africans, we just want our kids to do everything until finally they can't do anything. Right. Uh, when in the last curriculum, up to grade three, they do three subjects. 
in grade four, they do sub seven subjects, and that became a death trap because from there, they were just doing superficially everything. And at the end of the day, don't develop the necessary key skills of numeracy and literacy. And the decision we took was that we'll introduce all other subjects like technology, agriculture, music, arts later so that we strengthen their, 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 their skills in the, in the two uh, uh, key skills in education, numeracy and literacy. And it's, it's a raging mm. debate. People in technology yeah. are very unhappy in, in the way we've dealt with it. But really with advice, we thought that was the best way to really push back some of the lessons. But what the point she's making, which is quite helpful, is that we also in our schools help our kids acquire life skills not necessarily making them as curriculum skills. Just life skills. I mean, I was speaking to a professor from Japan. He was saying that Friday in Japan, despite the fact that they're such a rich country, it's a school cleaning day. Mm -hmm. As part of training their kids to be able to do manual work, to do work for themselves. And those are some of the small things that I think we have to reintroduce as part of socializing our kids, adequating the necessary skills. But the other points I'm taking, uh, with school nutrition, most rural provinces are trying that. There are constraints in other schools where there are no school kitchens so that there can be preparation in schools and therefore provinces opting to bring food from outside so that really you, you can. So that, but there is okay. lots of what consideration in your rural provinces. What about transport? Scholar transport also is one of a major issue. When I'm going, what I'm also going to sign this say with the Minister of Transport, it's a, a, an MOU around scholar transport. Because the budgets of scholar transports are also crowding out uh, some of the key functions in departments. You find that provinces from their budgets can't cope, up, can't cope with scholar transport. And that's why we're trying to see if we can, with the Minister of Transport, have integrated transport system to enable provinces to cope with the demands of scholar transport in provinces. Okay. It is a, a major problem, but in most instances, it's a budgetary problem. All right. and, and very briefly, and literally in 20 seconds, how much more time do you need for us to get to the point where you say, my work is done? Not, not me, but this but, government. I can yes. tell you what, from where I sit, there's still lots of work to be done. It will really be misleading the nation to say by 2014 things, definitely not. We're only phasing the last phase is this year. It takes okay. time to stabilize the curriculum. And I'm saying they must give, again, some five years more to, 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 to strengthen the, the, stabi the stability. Okay. From my own perspective, seven years, if we do, we continue the way we're continuing, we should be where we, we, okay. we should be. And but it can't be less than seven years, I think, from where I sit, to really have a world standard education system. It can't. There's still lots of work that okay. still needs to well, be we done. We certainly by the wish you the very best of luck with that. But most importantly, we thank you very much indeed for giving us an opportunity to have a conversation with you. Thanks. And congratulations on the class of 2013 Thanks. and the work Thanks, that Peter. remains. No, thank Minister you very of much. Basic Peter. Education. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And with that, we go back to the studio. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next week.